Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're discussing issues that I've personally wrestled with with regard to the faith. One thing that has really troubled me over the years has been finding some way to square our human desires with the commandments of God. How could there possibly be a world in which human desires can be fulfilled, and yet the commandments of God are also perfectly obeyed there? After all, people want an awful lot of stuff that it isn't possible to get through holiness, right? The typical approach is just to say, well, God knows better than you do. That's true, but it's not an answer, and it doesn't solve the problem of how human desires and the will of God can coexist. It's very rare to hear anyone address this issue in any satisfactory way. However, there is a way to resolve this problem. To start with, human beings are really quite bad at figuring out what they want. Let me give you the prime example. Money. Everybody wants money, right? Nope. In fact, unless you're the kind of guy who gets a really big thrill from swimming around in money like Uncle Scrooge, almost nobody wants money. They want power, respect, goods, security, and any number of other things that money can buy. But if they had all of that, they could do without the money itself. And notice, all the things I just mentioned, power, respect, goods, and security, can all be provided by God as part of a heavenly reward, so the reality of heaven can fulfill many of our desires in this way, provided we get there, of course. What about desires associated with sins? After all, if sin didn't offer us something we wanted, it wouldn't be hard to resist at all, would it? If there are no sins in heaven, how can people get those kinds of desires fulfilled? I'll just quickly go over the Ten Commandments in order to show how the desires that are often associated with breaking them would fare in heaven. The first commandment is usually broken by superstition, idolatry, magic, irreligion, atheism, or agnosticism. Atheism and agnosticism are impossible in heaven because you can't doubt the existence of God when he's always right next door, so to speak. To commit these sins would require you to be irrational in heaven. In other words, to wish harm unto yourself. So no one would have any reason for wanting to commit these sins in heaven. Superstition, idolatry, and magic are all expressions of our estrangement from God. People commit these sins because something big and supernatural is missing from their lives, and they're so impatient and desperate to regain it urgently that they turn to anything that seems unnatural and powerful enough to fill that void. In heaven, with God being constantly present, the void is already filled, and there's no longer any reason to desire these sins. Irreligion is only really possible if a person becomes disloyal to God or negligent in worship, and there just isn't anyone to compete with God for your loyalty in heaven. As for being negligent in worship, every act that's done in conformity to the will of God qualifies as worship in a certain sense, and so far none of these types of sin have been even desirable in a heavenly context. And, as we discussed in the last episode, eternal life implies being invulnerable to estrangement from God. What about taking the name of God in vain? Desiring to break this commandment would require that we want our own words to be useless or insignificant. Again, we'd need to wish harm on ourselves in order to commit this sin. Keeping holy the Lord's day is easy in a world where everyone and everything is holy. Now, as for the fourth commandment about honoring your father and mother, in heaven everyone has one father, God. And if the saints are impervious to estrangement from God, they can't possibly break this commandment either. Besides, the only reason why we often want to break this commandment on earth is that our earthly mothers and fathers can often be frustrating, infuriating, negligent, or even in some cases abusive. None of that is the case with God. Of course, it's trivially easy to not kill when everyone is immortal, so the fifth commandment is impossible to break in heaven. However, you could still go through the motions of killing someone if you wanted to, if they were immortal, it wouldn't hurt them and would therefore not be a sin. All of our desires for physical conflict, aggressive expression, and combat could be fulfilled without sinning in this way. The other reasons why people kill are revenge, which there's no cause for in heaven since no one can harm you there, escape from some horrible situation, which also doesn't happen in heaven, and personal gain, which is already accomplished in heaven as part of the heavenly reward. None of these desires, however, would be fulfilled by violence between immortals, and all of them could be fulfilled by God, so there's no good reason to want to kill anyone in heaven. The motive behind all kinds of lustful and adulterous acts is pleasure and satisfaction, which are part of the package in heaven because of our association with God. Therefore, sinning would only drive us further from these things there, even if it were possible. 
In heaven, every good thing is given to every one of the saints by God, so if you ever tried to steal anything from anyone, you wouldn't get anything you didn't have already, and they wouldn't lose anything they had. God isn't going to run out of the good things he has to give, and when your resources are limitless, stealing tends to lose its teeth, in much the same way violence does when everyone is immortal. All that would be accomplished by stealing would be conveying your malice to someone else, if that, and that's not a strong temptation to sin at all. Another thing that God has an infinite amount of to distribute to his saints is truth. So bearing false witness wouldn't accomplish anything except making you look kind of lame. As for coveting the goods of others, there is no opportunity for that either. When everyone has limitless resources, what is there to covet? So, to sum up, sinful behaviors are being discouraged in us for our own benefit, and although in this life certain goods are often held hostage by them, in heaven not a single sin could ever accomplish anything except causing harm to the person sinning. They're bad habits that we need to break so that our true desires can be fulfilled in the proper way. However, all of those desires can indeed be fulfilled by God and by eternal life. The only thing this doesn't address is whether we can still have the same kinds of desires between this life and the next. Next, can we desire the same things in heaven as we do on earth? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.